Muller, Andonian, O'Connor, and Milner to round out the field. We start with the top seed on the left, Sammy Sasso, redshirt sophomore, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Yaya Thomas, the 25 seed for Northwestern. He's knocked off number eight and number nine in his path to this quarterfinal match. What have you seen from Sasso? The, the tight win last night, but that's really a theme with him. He figures out a way to win the tight matches. Well, he was a little tighter than probably Tom Ryan would have liked at the Ohio State coach. It was 11-10 win, last, uh, been last second takedown, actually. So, yeah, with the thing that, that Sammy Sasso does so well, he's got great defense on the feet. He moves his feet well. He can take a man from his feet to his back adequately. But he's also a pretty good rider, and his defense is excellent because his flexibility is there. So uh, gets out quickly. And so when you get out quickly and be able to control a guy on top, you can go ahead and you got, almost got a takedown advantage on the guy. Sasso becoming the 35th different Buckeye to win a Big Ten championship this year. Defeated Nebraska's Rich Love at 5-2 to two in the finals. You know, I, I, would, I would tell Thomas... If I was coaching at this point, I says, "Yeah, you got to go out there and take him down not only once but twice because it can be difficult to ride, and you don't want to give up a reversal. So be going out there at a minimum, thinking you've got to get two takedowns." A couple of conference champions on the right. Yaya Thomas strikes. Let's keep the action there for a moment. Has the leg vulnerable position for Sassos? Has the whizzer in? And he comes back and locks up that cutback right there. He's got the wrist tied up here. He's got. Takedown. Again, the great defense on the feet from Sammy Sasso. It allows him to. Uh, now Thomas gets out quickly. Again, it just how he did that. I think they're going to go ahead and protest that call. Looks like the, the brick came out from the Ohio State corner. So the challenge brick toss. Let's go back to the right. O'Connor in a scoring position. Great patience on the edge of the mat. He was able to drag Milner back, secure the second leg, get the two right on the edge for the two-time ACC champ, Austin O'Connor. Been impressed with O'Connor as well because he's just he's a strong guy. He's a guy that finished third in this tournament a couple of years ago. Anybody that finishes third comes back in the consolation bracket, automatically has a lot of respect. Now they're looking for back points on this uh, uh, technique here by Sasso. Yeah, see how Sasso is able to sag back. He doesn't want to cut back right there. That could lose that position. But once he gets Thomas to his rear end right here, as he rolls back through, he has the two. And you can see that Thomas was able to, I think, get his shoulders up. And he did not get a two count. Jonathan Milner able to get the escape. He had a brief two-on-one as he was dragging hard on O'Connor. And they will hit O'Connor with a stall warning. Good look at Jonathan Milner. He's the SOCON champion this year. Two-time NCAA qualifier, seated 18th a season ago. Back-to-back -back SOCON titles for Milner, the redshirt junior from Greensboro. Call stands for Sasso and Thomas, meaning no near-fall points awarded. Ohio State loses the challenge. Sasso maintains the one-point lead. And Sasso and O'Connor, really similar in their abilities. Everything I said about O'Connor, basically, Sasso is true about uh, O'Connor, the guy that came back from the 6-0 deficit in the conference finals and, and uh, won that match, got thrown to his back by Andonian from Pitt. Yeah, Bryce Andonian had, had him on the ropes, and it was O'Connor outscoring the Hokie 10-2 over the... Final four and a half minutes. He's able to get away in a three to one lead for North Carolina. Oh, he's got this tight as well. This looks like the same technique that basically Dayton Fix was able to hit. Not enough real estate to really do it the right way. Coleman Scott told us earlier this year that Austin O'Connor has added more offense to his tank, and not just a, a one-dimensional. Always had those heavy hands, heavy ties, shooting more frequently. He's certainly evolved with his footwork. Yeah, he's, he's been a slide-by guy, but he's added a, a straight double, and he's a good finisher once he gets in on the single leg. 
He's also one of the smartest wrestlers that Coleman Scott said he has been around. Student of the sport. You know, people, you know, they see the Coleman Scott that ended up being the, the bronze medalist in the Olympics and, the, you know, the work that he does off the elbow ties. He basically came to Oklahoma State not knowing anything on his feet. <laughs> he just started. Which is amazing yeah, because yeah. You, you bring up a good point. That's what you remember Coleman Scott for, but yeah. prior to his arrival <laughs> in Stillwater. Straight double leg there by O'Connor on the right. Beautiful shot and beautiful finish. And the thing that, oh, that why that straight double works so much is he's so heavy on the head. As you mentioned, Sean, with the heavy hands, man stands up a little bit. And with his shorter stature, he just pops right back into that double leg. And he's also tough at the end of periods in the top position. O'Connor in control, so we slide over to Sasso and Thomas. Tied at two. Sasso trying to get out from underneath, and he does. He'll get the point. So Sasso back out in front, 3-2. Yeah, Yaya Thomas is dangerous in this position. You want to you want to stay off the tracks with a guy that has this ability straight on. You want to kind of work on his angles, or if you are going to stand in front of him, you want to get to a slight angle. And right there, straight on, Thomas gets to a leg. Shin was applied, and now he's back on that roll through. This is what he does pretty well that allows him, Sasso, to be able to come out and scramble. We'll see if he's able to collect the points right now as he tries to move forward, and he does. A nice answering takedown. Again, that's what makes Sammy Sasso so great is that it's really tough to score on him. Let's see if Sasso can ride. He tries to stick a leg in, leading 5-2, 42 seconds to go. We pay our first visit, Brock Mahler, Missouri, the three-time MAC champ, part of the 10th consecutive Missouri MAC title run this year, matched up against Bryce Andonian who can score offense from every possible angle, but it's Mahler with a 7-3 lead. And when you're wrestling a guy like Andonian, you have to move your feet. If You can't you can't just not move your feet, and, and you can see that Mahler's active right now, trying to hold that lead. You don't want to plant at any point in time because that's going to be real easy then for Andonian to score on you. Scramble. Didn't like it. See how he backed out of that? Yep. <laughs> He felt that that wasn't going to be to his advantage here, so Mahler bail, bailed out of that pretty quickly after he had the legs and hips pretty tight. Mahler definitely in, hold, definitely in a hold-the-lead mode right now. Brock Mahler continuing the lead, 7-3, to three, 40 seconds to go, third period. Sasso, a 5-2 lead, starts the third period on top. Couple of quick stand-ups by Thomas. Sasso trying to return him back down, and he will. Yeah, he's got a beautiful sequence there. He tries to lace the right leg in and sag back, and, and now he's looking for back points. He doesn't quite get it that this is exactly where he wants to be. This is where he wants to be to finish the period. Take care of the dangerous Yaya Thomas. Left-handed headlock off the mat there by Andonian. That's one of those situations, Sean, where you back out too much and all of a sudden you're, you're a little top-heavy right there and you can be hit with the headlock. Missouri coach Brian Smith had his eye on Mahler for a while. He, he first saw him at a camp when Mahler was a sophomore at Father Tolton High School. He watches the high schooler stepped onto the mat against the Collegiate All-American in Le'Veon Mays. Gina Mahler Crane, a proud mama right there. She has watched her son Brock in their home state punch a ticket into the Friday night semifinals. The junior in his third NCAA championship. Quite a performance and a story brewing for Missouri. You know, Jim, we, we started this wait with a question on what makes Sasso so tough. We saw him finish out the ride in the second period on top, not giving up the point. What has he done here in the third period? Similar, he has over a minute riding time, just so technically sound. Yeah, but he's also doing, you know, Yaya Thomas is dangerous still. 
you know, takedown under, you know, basically if he gets a takedown with 25 seconds left, so he can ride out Sasso, he can tie this match. So the way you do that is you tie him up. You don't let him operate from space. He's working off that underhook, takes the points when they're there, but he doesn't overcommit himself, collects the two. I like the fact that he continued to look for offense there, even when it was a defensive situation. Late action, third period. Luol and Oklahoma State, Murin of Iowa, the 12 seed, one of 11 double-digit seeds into the quarterfinals, and we go into sudden victory. Two of the proudest programs in the country when you look at the history of these championships, the Hawkeyes and the Cowboys ready to tee it up an extra minute, sudden victory. Big match, you know, Murin, high seed in the Big Ten tournament, lost in the quarterfinals to Ridge Lovett, avenged that loss last match. But Muren was the guy that Tom Brands was spending the most time with on Wednesday. Let's go down to Quint real quickly. Quint. We're just uh, attending to uh, something on Boo's face, six-year senior from Yukon, Oklahoma. This guy's battled injuries his entire career. This, this is... The, both these guys actually escaped adversity yesterday, and they're in it again today. Mentioned the injuries for the wall and shoulder injuries. Cost him both 2016 and 2019. He slides by to the side, secures the ankle, and gets the two. Oklahoma State's Boo Luwallen in sudden victory. Boy, he's quick and explosive when he finds an angle. Deceptive. Another tight win for Bula Wellen. Three-time Big 12 champion. Joining Zach Esposito and Reggie Wright as the only 149-pounders at Oklahoma State to win three conference titles. A big hug from John Smith. The Wallen's only loss, ironically, this year Brock Moeller, Missouri, in a tiebreaker, 7-5. Sasso Luolan in the semis tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern ESPN. O'Connor and Moeller will be hooking up in the bottom half of the bracket. North Carolina hasn't had a national champ since the great T.J. Jaworski won one in 95. O'Connor trying to change that. Sasso.